Bottom 11. one nothing. Dominican Republic. Drive to right center field. That's going to get in. Base hit. They tied it. Winning run. 90 feet away. One out. Bottom of the 11. Ground ball. Off the glove. Of Ibar. They did it. They win it. The Netherlands is going to Miami. Down goes the Dominican. Fourteen years ago, the Netherlands arrived on the international baseball stage of the World Baseball Classic with the upset victories, plural, over the Dominican Republic, including that one, which knocked out the Dominican Republic from that 2009 Classic. Tonight, does the host squad Chinese Taipei have a similar signature win in it? We will find out. There you go to look at Hensley Mullins, the manager of this Kingdom of the Netherlands squad, and a guy who gets to trot out maybe the most talent-laden lineup in the World Baseball Classics Pool A group. And we take a look at that lineup tonight with the engine in the middle in Xander Bogarts. Yeah, you mentioned he finally broke out, found that game speed. We've been talking about that since they showed up. Do these big leaguers come in here right away and start producing? They come down that spring training environment, and the top of this lineup is full of them, but they hit their stride last time out. Starting pitcher on the other side for Yue Bing Lin's Chinese Taipei staff is a guy who's going to come from a very unique arm angle. It's the right-hander, Tzu Peng Huang, who gets the nod this evening. Yeah, you mentioned it. The first two years he spent in the professional league here in Chinese Taipei. He was coming out of the bullpen because you can take a look right there at that arm slot. Usually, that is a direct path to the bullpen, but he's been a starting pitcher in this league. Throwing a ton of strikes. Really good command. And you can see the velocity there, top now at 89. That is tough from that angle. Ready to go with another incredible atmosphere already tonight as game number eight of the 2023 World Baseball Classic Pool A will get started here at Tai Jung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium. And Jerickson Profar steps into the batter's box. Fresh off. A home run for his squad, a team that actually had the off day yesterday. And first pitch is there for a strike at 7.08 in the evening, and we're underway. Yeah, you get a good look at that arm slot. Submarine. Not a whole lot of movement. It's just that funky angle, a different release point. Oh, and two. 69 degrees tonight, mostly clear. And the light shining brightly on a jam-packed Tai Jung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium. And a bloop to shallow right is going to get down, and Jerkson Profar fights his way out of an 0-2 count with a leadoff single. Wasting no time. Creating some sort of offense right away to get to the middle of this lineup. Just enough to get the ball into right field. Listen to this crowd go quiet. So base runner aboard for Roger Bernardina, the veteran for the Netherlands. One veteran who is not in the lineup tonight for this Kingdom of the Netherlands team is Vladimir Ballantine, and that one getting past Gungwon Giligalau, the backstop, and that's gonna head all the way to the backstop. And it will enable Jerickson Profar to take second. So, a start that may not be an auspicious one. That is presumably gonna go as a pass ball on Giligalau. So man in scoring position, four pitches into this game for the Netherlands. And another one. Way in tight, it hit Bernadina, so it is first and second now. Not the start that Yue Ping Lin was hoping for from Tzu Peng Wong so far. Yeah, it's going to be interesting too how they manage this bullpen. They had the day off a couple days ago. 
and then last night used most of their back end arms i'm sure they're all available again tonight Tell you what though, if you're wanting in this situation, you look into that lineup, you watch these guys on TV, these, these players here in Taiwan, they follow Major League Baseball. They know exactly who they're facing. Now all of a sudden you've got first and second none out and you're facing Xander Bogarts. It can rattle you. We talked about Italy being rattled last night, the pitching. It's a sim similar situation. You've got your home crowd facing one of the world's best players 60 feet away from you. First and second for Xander Bogarts. And another one off the glove of Gilligalau. And Profar is going to take third. A really shaky start for the catcher, Gilligalau. That's a tough arm slot to pick it up when you hit him. It's apparently, too, when you catch him, Gilligalau having a tough time. That ball that's glove side. Unless there was a cross up there as well. Remember, runner on second, they flash you signs. No pitch com here. Yeah, he may have been crossed up. Two pass balls in the inning already. And Bogarts with runners at the corner. <laughs> Xander Bogarts is swinging in this situation. He's a guy, he's got a guy on the mound. He's, he knows he can smell it, that he's rattled a little bit, a little intimidated. Usually you try and get him to throw, prove he can throw strikes before he starts swinging. Runner off from first. Throw down to get Bernardina. It is not in time. Stolen base. Netherlands making all kinds of stuff happen on the base pass, and it's second and third now. To one count on Bogarts. You can see Jurek's profile just hey, settle down to Zander. Been a little too aggressive. Huge jump for Bernardino. Really no chance on that pitch. Dr. Bernardino will be 39 years old this June. Certainly not moving like it. Bogarts fouls it. And a two strike count on him now. <laughs> Tenth first inning for these fans. You can feel that here. Job by Wong to come back and get the first out on the superstar Bogarts. That's a huge strikeout for Wong. You're in a situation you're trying to settle in, you're crossing up your catcher, there's pass balls all over the place. And then you strike out one of the world's best shortstops. That brings in Didi Gregorius. So far in this World Baseball Classic, Gregorius left side and threw for a base hit. Profar is in to score. Bernardina stops at third. An RBI single for Didi Gregorius. Just his second hit in four at bats so far. A guy who's taken three walks, has been on base a lot, does it, slapping it the other way to get his team on top of the first. That's an area where he doesn't usually live when you look at his spray chart, too. Everything, most of Didi Gregorius' hits, especially with the power to right field, but he'll take it. Just slapping that ball into that hole, right? Pass the shortstop. First run of the game. To Peng Wong. 
Only 11 pitches, but he's already on his fifth batter of this first inning. He's given up two hits. He's hit a man. Two pass balls charged to Gungwon Gilligalau behind the plate. A stolen base by Roger Bernardina. The only thing that's gone right for Chinese Taipei so far is the strikeout of Bogarts, which is a big thing to go right. Ball one into scope. Jonathan Scope won for his first seven. Goes after the one of them. Didn't allow a chance to make a play. Oh, man. And a brutal first inning continues. Pass balls, a missed catch on the pop-up. There is no win to speak of tonight in this ballpark. But those are always really difficult straight up the elevator shot. Yeah, no, I think this is all mental. I mean, you think about some of the the pitches that he, he's cranked, got with the backstop, the cross-ups. I think he's just in his head a little bit. I, I, I think you, know, you take away the physical aspect of this. Illegal out, guy who had a big night last night, broke this game open. The big three-run bomb to left field. Struggling back there right now. This hits oh, off the glove. <laughs> that close to the second out of the inning. That is ruled an error. It's actually two balls and one strike. Now three and one. Yeah, he's still thinking about that missed opportunity. Look at Scope. You know, he's got out front of the pitch. Man, more lonely a feeling. Gilligalau currently playing with the Wayfront Dragons in, in the Chinese Professional Baseball League, CPBL here in Taiwan. He is a former minor leaguer in the United States in the Cleveland organization. A good pitch, 3-1 count. Obviously, you're dealing with the fact that you can't to drop that pop-up. You go down 3-0, three, 3-1, oh, three, then you get back to 3-2 with a pitch just like this. Slaughter black. Three balls and two strikes. Tupac Wong looking for his second strikeout of the inning. 3-2, runner off, and there it is, a call strike three. Runner hung up between first and second. Gregorius was trying to draw the attention away from Bernadina, perhaps, or Bernadina straight off the bag to enable Gregorius to get back. Either way, the runners return to their bags, and with two gone, it brings in Josh Palacios, the right fielder, and runners remain in the corners. I, mean, I think Didi Gregorius just didn't get a real good jump. He was going on 3-2, and then he realized, oh, no, I'm about to get thrown out here. And he pulled up short, and then Bernardino watched him, reacted, was able to get back to the bag. Ming Chia Su, the pitching coach, out for a first inning mound visit. Ryan, we've been here for four straight days now. We have heard this song playing in the background about Your a favorite. thousand times. There you see the heads up play by the veteran Bernardino to be able to enable Gregorius to get back. You can see Bernardino taking his time right now, mound visit. This is an interesting play. Didi Gregorius, like I said, 
didn't get a real good jump. So he took off, realized that there's no contact on the play. Usually a 3 2 count, either ball four or there's contact. So he's pulled up a little bit. Get another look at it right here. He's like, oh, whoops. Puts the brakes on, gets in the middle, looks over at Bernardino. You got time to go. And you can see the infielder right there who caught the ball. Situation like that, you have to run back to Didi Gregorius at first base. And then if Bernardino commits, then you make the throw. Missed opportunity right there. They had Didi Gregorius caught up. First and third, two out now for Josh Palacios. Josh in the sixth spot tonight. His brother Richie is the designated hitter. He will bat eighth. Inning over. Talk about limiting damage. A great job by Tsukbong Wong, who somehow keeps that to a one run inning. We're going to the bottom of the first. Chinese Taipei coming up. Just one run across for the Kingdom of the Netherlands in the top of the first inning, despite a big thread. And so we head to the Bottom of the first, and the home team will send out this starting line as announced by manager Yue Ping Lin. And you see that graphic down the bottom, four home runs in this tournament. Remember, Tyler, since 2006, when the World Baseball Classic kicked off, they've only hit a total of five home runs. They have been explosive. We saw some fireworks last night that set this crowd off. Let's see if they can do it here against Lars Hire. Lars Heyer, the reigning most valuable player of the Holland series, who grabbed two wins in a four-game sweep. Pump ball, close to Blossom. Line ball in the air to right. Bringing back to the wall. How about there for Josh Palacios, who had that one all the way, and one gone. Lars High working quick tonight. No hesitation whatsoever. We saw last night some of the Italian pitchers were a little rattled. You see the scouting report. Fastball change up curveball. Upper edges fastball, like you said. Tyler here has dominated the Dutch League. Had some time in the United States as a 19, 20 year old. He decided to retire. Go home, pitch 10 years on home soil. Party atmosphere is underway here in Taijung. Swing the liner to right center field. That's in for a base hit. Lee Lin's around first. He gets into second, a one-out double in the first. To expect from Chinese Taipei coming into this it was going to be the offense, the pitching. We talked to their manager, we talked about the young team, but their offense has been explosive, especially these last couple of games. They're so aggressive, they just ambush pitching, make contact early in counts, and mess around. Guy who had one of the big moments last night, Tzu Wen Lin, whose grounder will advance the runner here. A lot of early swings, as Ryan noted, and Lin is retired, but Lee Lin will move ahead to third. And a two out. So brings up the hero from last night, or at least one of them. A guy who has acquired the nickname the Secretary of Defense now here in Taiwan. It's Yu Chang. <laughs> Ryan, that moment for Yu Chang instantly became 
one of the defining moments of this year's classic, no matter what happens the rest of the way. Sixth inning homer that rallied Chinese Taipei from a 7-5 deficit. They tied things. No, I think it'll become a defining moment in his identity here back in Chinese Taipei with these fans. Remember, he pulled out of selection January 1st. He said he wasn't going to be available to, to be on this team. Travel back from the United States. All of a sudden, fans let him know about it via social media. A couple days later, he felt the pressure, but he won them over with one swing of the bat last night. Or won them back, should I say. Here's another look at that big fly from last night. This is on the first pitch of the at bat, straight away center field. Tied this game up. Place went crazy. Look at that. Look at the emotion pouring out of him. Just an unbelievable moment. Lars Iyer didn't want anything to do with him here. So, a four pitch walk, but you kind of pick your poison in these spots in the order. It's a way Lin home run last night. Yu Chang a home run last night. And now Yenting Wu, who homered in the first game of this classic and has been red hot to get things started here in Taichung. Five straight out of the zone now from higher. Too, watching Lars Hire, who pitches over in the Dutch league, I guarantee you it's not the same kind of energy as this. But the atmosphere here, the sound, the noise, the field kind of sweeps you up sometimes. Lars Hire's got that quick, that quick tempo, working fast. Sometimes you just have to step up, catch your breath, and dial right back into what you're trying to do. From 3-0 to 3-2. Yenting Wu takes ball four, they're loaded up for the guy who had two pass balls and an error in the top of this inning, but had a monster home run to break this game open last night. It's the catcher Gilligalau as Burt Blylevin is out from the third base dugout. Let's take a look back at last night's big shot from the big catcher. Yeah, we saw the home run that tied it up from Hugh Chang. How about this? Busted this game open from the catch at Gilligalau. Second base, Yu Chang took a Lin at third, Chang at second, Yenting Wu over at first. And Gilligalau goes after the first pitch and skies it to right. Palacios is there, and that will retire the side. So an inning bookended by flyouts to Josh Palacios. Lars higher, strands the base is loaded. We're going to the second in tight jump.
Kingdom oh. of the Netherlands with a run in the first. Chinese Taipei loading the bases, but leaving them loaded. And as we head into the second, it'll be the bottom third of the order. And Jolton Simmons will lead things off for the Netherlands. Richie Palacio is to follow, and then Chadwick Trump. See Vladimir Valentin, top step of that dugout out of the lineup. It's interesting. Apparently, it's a matchup situation. Thought the lefty was the better play against the submariner in this situation. It's a shaky start for Tsipong Wong, and right, I'm sure you've been in situations like that before where first few batters, nothing goes right, but you limit damage, you only give up one in the first. How much does that help you get into a rhythm? Yeah, well, you saw him in the bullpen throwing pitches off the mound in between innings. We, we had a chance to, to look in. All that's basically what he's doing is just pressing the reset button. I've been there plenty of times. That first inning for me was always shaky. I didn't feel right. And you just have to battle through it, get back, calm the nerves, press that reset button, get back out, do your thing. First strike in there to the multi gold glove winner, Angelton Simmons, four time. Full glove selection, Major League Baseball in the U.S. Currently a free agent, but just 33 years old. Trying to bunt his way on, pops it up, and some tough spin. But a nice play by Wong, one out. Let's take a look at the defensive alignment for Chinese Taipei. Outfielders who cover a ton of ground, Po Young Wong in left, Kishen Chen in center, both gold glovers in the CBBL. The two big sticks, Ning Ting Wong, uh, Wu, third base, Yu Chang at first. Gilly Galau, who had to press the reset button himself after that inning. Planking a couple of these pitches in that first that could have cost them big time. Huh? Able to get out of there with just the one run. First offering is down low to Richie Palacios, who is into the box. Today, the first at bat of his World Baseball Classic stay with this Netherlands squad. Richie and Josh, their mom from Curacao, got her over to first. It's a missing play from Yu Chang. And we talked about the situation with Gilligal out trying to get in a rhythm. Just missing some. These are tough pitches. Look, we talked about the top angle for hitters. He was having a tough time picking him up as well. And look at this. Like I said, this is straight mental in your head. When you're missing pitches crossing up, and there's a couple smalls. They're all good. Telling his catcher, hey, we're fine. Let's go to work. You know, after the first inning, he made the last out of the first inning. We looked down, and one of the other backstops, Dayon Lin, was behind the plate in full catcher's gear. So often, you know, Major League Baseball, you'll see somebody throw on a, a mask and a glove and go out and start warming up a pitcher. Right. But we saw Dayon Lin out there and thought maybe they had already pulled the plug today on Gilligalau's day. He did come out, but Ryan, you made the comment, it wouldn't surprise you because so often that is the case, especially in these high leverage games. As man, that one does not get the strike call, and it's 3-0. and oh. But he is out there, but it wouldn't have been shocking a guy with such a shaky start that a coaching staff says, hey, we can't risk this today. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's the first inning, we talked about, obviously, the tournament-style play and everything else. But, you know, for Chinese Taipei, you've seen it before with, with them in Japan, Korea. They just do not mess around in these tournaments. Short leash. And if you're having trouble catching the pitcher, you know, we'll just make a replacement quick, but they want to keep his bat in the lineup as well. Nice pitch on 3 1. Some frisbee movement there. And if he can land that pitch in the strike zone, and then this, where he gets that swing and miss, man, he's going to be in good shape against this Netherlands offense. That pitch is nasty. Chadwick Trump, Q shot, right side of the infield. Sung Che Chung, three up, three down. The Netherlands going. In the second, to Pung Wong, terrific bounce back inning. Chinese Taipei to the bat rack again.
tied standings in Pool A as we play game number eight of ten here from Taichung, Taiwan on a Saturday night under the lights. The Netherlands, 2-0, the lone remaining unbeaten here, can clinch the top seed coming out of Pool A with a win tonight because their one remaining game is tomorrow against Italy. Nobody else will be able to match that win total. Panama already done for Pool A. Chinese Taipei with a win sets up that scenario and you may have read that and done a double take like wait a minute what every single team in the group still has a shot at the one seed if chinese taipei wins this game tonight wow i think what really set up this scenario was panama's big win in the dude game today gotsy performance that pitches figured it out minor to left off the bat of jishen chen what we are talking about. There's a coat bar there to put that one away. I mean, this, <laughs> this is nuts. A win for Chinese Taipei tonight. Cuba would have to beat the home team tomorrow in the early game, and Italy would have to come back with a win over the Netherlands tomorrow night in the matchup of the European powerhouses. As a blooper out to shallow center is a base hit out of the ninth spot for Po Young Wong. But, Ryan, we talked coming into this week, and you and I have been texting about this for months. You know, I think Pool A is probably the most evenly matched group. We yeah. didn't mean literally that everybody would split their four games. Right, and I remember looking through, you know, some of the teams and, you know, some of the rosters and thinking, man, like, you know, this is anyone's pool in this situation. Look at that little blue. Bernardino was playing deep on that ball. But you weren't kidding, Tyler. You were giving me the, the, you know, some of the backstories on some of these players when we were talking it over and trying to do our prep. And I mean, we, we, we kept, we, we kept to the, hey, this is probably the most balanced ball. But now it's turned into this. Insane. And the thing that's crazy about this is obviously we're still a ways away from potential reality that all teams can finish it two and two. But you feel like if all these teams play 10 games against each other, they might all finish at five and five. They all play 20 yeah. games, they might all finish at 10 and 10. It's just that well balanced in pool A. And it goes to show the continued development and growth of the game of baseball in places like Taiwan, like the Netherlands, like the islands, like Italy. I know there aren't a ton of Italian-born players on that Italy squad, but the continued growth for that country. Cuba, obviously, the powerhouse that Cuba is and always has been. Panama, the tremendous run through the qualifiers last year. And that's what the Classic was created to do, and this is either going to be a hit-by-pitch or a foul ball, and I believe it will be a hit by pitch as our first base umpire tonight, Keetalk Park, signaled over there that he did not see that come off the bat. Well, not just that, too. Was it on the check swing? Yeah. You see Chadwick Trump kind of looking, saying, hey, hold on a minute. Did he swing the bat? And obviously, if he swung the bat, then that's a cold strike, regardless of it hitting him anywhere. So, Tony Chong, a hit batsman here in the bottom of the second, and pushes Pogu along two second. It's that running fastball. Put him right on that number on the front of that jersey. Not often you get hit in the stomach by a pitch. Ouch. And you can see, too, the fact that he was actually committing to swing. You see Hansi Mullen's looking, hey, did he swing? It was close, I think he held up, but it just goes to show how much you call it cheating on a pitch where you sell out and say, you know, I'm just going to hunt that fastball. Pretty apparent that he was sitting on a fastball right there because he was swinging. That ball, you know, the ball pretty much hit him in the chest. The other factor is too, Tyler, talking about this ball, who finishes first and second. You want to get that first seed. You want to try and avoid Japan uh, in the next round. They are the juggernaut of full B. Sung Chit Chung, the second baseman, back at the top of the order. The crowd came to its feet when he strode to the plate to make this noise. All of a sudden, that pitch 
guys starting to climb up to 28 pitches. Everyone's with the day off yesterday, so their pitching staff's in a little bit better shape. Look at some of the pitch restrictions. the first day, coming out of the bullpen. And maybe a little bit of a stall here as Chadwick Tromp goes out for a word with Lars Heyer to try to calm him down and give Derek West, the Astros prospect, some more time to work. He spent last se season with Double-A Corpus Christi in the Texas League. And again, we saw this last night. This is the noise during a mound visit. Right. You know, they gave you time right now to get Derek West loose. And I've got to say, if you're in that bullpen right now with Mike Harkey, the situation, you better get moving. Because this game speeds up with this atmosphere and the way they swing it. It speeds up real quick. And all of a sudden, you're going to be in a situation where your cup runs in. You're like, man, I, I wish I had Derek West available two hitters ago. is the Triple Crown winner, Lee Lin. Don't you mention you're the part of that order coming up. The reigning CBBL MVP drives the ball down the right field line, but slices it foul. Look at all these accomplishments for Lee Lin. Third Triple Crown winner and the second Taiwanese player to win the Triple Crown in the CPBL. 2019 batting title, best 10 award squad member twice in his career and a three-time league champion with Taiwan Series MVP recognition. And now where to put him. One one, ground and foul. The other thing too, Ryan, and we've talked about this a lot, and we continue to harp on the point when you're warming in that bullpen underground, yeah. you are not privy to just what this atmosphere is like. As we look around the diamond, at Po Young Wong in third, Gun Yu Jong at second, Tung Chi Cheng in first. And a liner to center field, a base hit. Chinese Taipei's got one home, and this game is tied as everybody else holds. They're loaded up again with one out for Tsung Wei Lin. That's 
that quick. It happens here with this energy in this crowd. Hinson Mullins walking off out to the mound. He's got to make a pitching change. And for Derek West, about to have the sensation of being taken up in a plane, blindfolded with headphones on, and then everything taken off and pushed out to skydive and parachute into this atmosphere in a 1-1 game at the bottom of the second. Like you just have no... Never a boring inning here at Tai Jung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium as we are in the bottom of the second. The best pitcher in the Dutch Major League is out of this game. Lars Heyer yielding an RBI single to center by the 2022 CPBL MVP Lee Lin. We're all tied up. And the bases remain loaded for the home team. Team point taller, you're saying. You know, Derek West coming in has been privy to this environment because he's been warming up down in the bunker and behind the bullpen, behind the uh, dugout, where those bullpens are. And it is such a transition when you walk out on this field. No time to settle in. Bases are loaded. Have to come up with those pitches right away. Derek West's numbers with the Houston Astros, a 4-4-5 ERA, 39 games. First pitch on the way from the right-hander West is in off the glove of Chadwick Trump, who kept it close. Good job to get to that ball, too. Keep it from going to the backstop. Derek just gets away from it. I, I, I can't stress this enough. You see that pitch, that Aaron pitch, or that hanging slider? It, the crowd just does something to you. Plays such a roll. One and one. And it's not so much, I'm sure Derek West has played in some noisy ballparks, or some big ballparks. But it's just relentless. It just keeps going and going and going. The chance continues. Kunyu Jong, second base, Sung Cha Cheng, and first base, the man who drove in the game time run a minute ago, Lee Lin. Zitwei Lin left the yard last night, trying to get his team in the lead in the second. One, two. Evens it up. off the map last night. And this is in the second inning, the first runs of that second game. This place went crazy. Remember, they had the first game against. Opening night against Panama. Panama. Yeah, they had the first night against Panama. They went down by a really big margin. They really got mercy rule. You think about that, and all of a sudden, last night, the bats broke out. Big win against the league.
zero from last night. Yu Chang. Here's the reaction right here. Big back in this lineup. Frustrated. Bases are loaded, don't know where to put him. Couldn't get it done. But it doesn't get any easier. Yu Chang. You know he's swinging these are early pitches. Gotta be so careful out of the gates. Even if you're cheering for the opposing team, you're taking in the atmosphere here in Taichung. And the first pitch there for a strike to UJ. By the way, see Derek West going for that breaking ball. Guarantee he watched that ball last night against Italy. That pitch. Get out the center field. First pitch to the at bat. One and one. Derek West, we talked about the scar on his elbow. Tommy John surgery that he enhanced with the baseball stitch tattoos on each side of that right arm. Now it goes to two and one. We talked also about how the metal structure down the left and right field lines here at Tai Junk's Intercontinental Ballpark, inspired by baseball stitches. There you see Chang able to hang up. One, a swing and another drive to deep left center field. Yu Chang has done it again. Strikes. And it's that fastball. I said you gotta be careful when you're pitching to him. When you slip behind in the count, you have to count. There's nowhere to put him. Loaded bases. He knows right away what he just did for himself, for these fans, his team. I keep going back to it. I can't get enough of the fact he decided not to play. Then he changed his mind. I guarantee you, he did not regret that decision. Two grounder to the right side, and that will do it. But Chinese Taipei electrified by that man again. A two out grand slam for the hero Yu Chang, and it's a 5 1 lead for the home team going to the third. We said all night last night and all day today, how could anything possibly top that game between Chinese Taipei and Italy from last night? And Yu Chang is working on a script for us. <laughs> a sequel. Unreal. A grand slam. <laughs> and a very familiar looking celebration rounding first base. And Yu Chang blasting his team out in front. And as we head into the top of the third, it is the top third of the Netherlands lineup that will get us going. Jordan Profar steps into the batter's box. Whew. 
They quieted down for a second. I felt like, oh, my. You take a breath. My, my heart rate can drop a little bit. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. Here is the scene in the dugout. Listen to this. If you want to know the story behind that celebration, the salute, which has become so omnipresent over the last couple of days, including the constant elevation of nicknames. I just saw another one on social media that uh, he has now been elevated to commander in chief, Yu Chang. <laughs> Yu Chang back on January 1st, as Ryan noted, initially said that he did not want to be chosen to be part of this team. He had signed a deal, wanted to work on nabbing a job in spring training in the Grapefruit League with the Boston Red Sox this spring. And people were not pleased. Chinese Taipei fans took to social media, livid about it. And the main reason behind that was Yu Chang had been allowed to serve just 12 days of his compulsory, his required four-month military service in return for participating in the 2019 Asian Baseball Championship. But a condition of that was continuing to play for the national team for the next five years as part of the reduction in the time that he would have needed to spend in that military service. So, 3 2, grounded, that'll stay fair as an offer to the first base back and the leadoff out in the third. So, that's the reason behind the salute because now he is serving his country in all kinds of ways. There were all kinds of memes that rocketed around social media here in Taiwan, saving Private Chang and the like. He was actually met by the commissioner of the CPBL, Chi Chong Tai, on January 3rd, and then had reversed course and promised to play if selected, which of course he was going to be selected. He's one of the best players that this island has ever produced. And you put it so perfectly last night. If he would have come, shown up, plays four games, goes two for 17, strikes out seven times, yeah. it is a completely different story. But he shows up, monster homer to tie a game last night, a grand slam to give his team the lead tonight, and he has authored these yeah. indescribable moments. Yeah, because you, you think about it, right? It's like he kind of forced him to come back, he's like, okay, I'll come back. You know, you want him to have that passion to represent his country. And then, you know, like you said, he comes back and he goes over for eight or Chinese Taipei bow out of this thing early, whatever it may be, and off he goes. It'd still be that stain on the relationship between him and the fans that they hold so dear. Those relationships are so massive when you come from a place like Taiwan and representing the people here. So all of a sudden we've seen it last night and tonight. There's absolute no doubt. There's nowhere to put him. That ball deep into the night. Two, two down below the knees to Bernardino. Three balls and two strikes. And how about Tupac Wong who started, I mean, that first inning, single, a batter hit by pitch, two pass balls and a stolen base, an RBI single for Didi Gregorius. Things looked ugly. And then... You look up, he's retired six straight as he hits 40 pitches. Trying to dispatch Bernadina. Foul ball. And he's going to do a couple deeper counts, especially the lefties, too. I think he struggles more with the lefties. He can't offload that frisbee slider you see from that angle, like he did with Xander Bogarts. We talked about the fact Derek West was trying to be careful, but there's nowhere to put Hugh Chang in this at bat. So what he tries to do with this sequence, you can see right here, he goes slider, good pitch. Tries again, expands the strike zone, and then gets the check swing. And guess what? Tries to challenge him, fastball middle in. Good night. Sometimes 
you think a thought in your head and think like, well, that's an insane amount of hyperbole. There are, what, 7 billion people on this planet right now? I can't think of another human being who is at a high, the <laughs> yeah. same level as Yu Chang right now. Right. That guy For is sure. king of this island at the moment. You think about it too, another thing, you know, you hear about guys when they come back and they're playing tournaments like this in the month of March, as opposed to doing their regular spring training routine, trying to get their quote unquote, get their work in. You hear some of you guys say, prep for the season. You go back and everything just feels easier. You have this, your confidence just goes absolutely through the roof. And I think for him, a lot of these guys, when they go back and they've had this experience where the games matter, they've got this crowd again. It's been a while since he's had this experience in front of his home crowd. Oh. He's back to Phil Myers there for the Boston Red Sox and just destroy balls on that Jeff Blue field. And a moment where Tsukong Wong could be getting frustrated with some strike calls that maybe he feels like he should be getting that he's not. And who's one of the first two to go greet him? Yu Chang over from first. Leadoff man retired in this inning. Roger Bernardino, the walk to follow. Xander Bogarts staring at a 2 0 count. Now 3 0. Bogarts, a strikeout victim in his first trip to the plate against Wong. 3 0 pitch. Ball four. So back to back, one out walks, and it's first and second. With Edie Gregorius coming to the plate, his RBI single. Got the Netherlands on the board back in the first. There's one thing we talk about the atmosphere here when this when this Chinese star pay team's on offense, but there's one team in pool A, I will say this, because the bats, the names. That could turn this game into a 5 5 game quick, it's the Netherlands. Not only because, you know, obviously you got the power, you got the talent, but the patience as well. They start sniffing out the Huang, he's got some control issues, he's struggling to find the plate. They'll just wait him out all night long. The Netherlands, that 3 to 1 win over Panama, they put together eight hits in that one, seven hits in the 4 to 2 win over Cuba. Here is Gregorius. Jerks and Profar has scored the first and only run of this game so far for the Kingdom. Long, ready after a visit from his pitching coach Chu, and the first pitch gets past. Gilligalau and back to the screen. So a couple of pass balls in the first inning and a wild pitch here in the third. And it's second and third with one out now. And a shutdown inning that Chinese Taipei would have liked to have in danger. This is the natural. When you throw from that arm slot, you're going to have command issues. Oh, that ball getting away. He's frazzled right now. It's a situation where Lin, we saw some questionable. And right there, we saw some questionable moves. Night one, how he managed his bullpen. You see Wu right now getting loose. He better start moving. This game can, can change real quick. Another guy who calls his ballpark home. Wu pitching for the CTBC brothers. Gregorius tags the one over. Foul. Didi Gregorius, born in Amsterdam. He spent a few years there. One of the guys who comes from the islands. Curacao and Aruba producing the vast majority of the players from the islands on this roster. Also one player on this roster from Sin Martin. That's the right-handed relief pitcher, Franklin Van Herp. Ball. That is the reason why 
this federation rebranded to call itself the Kingdom of the Netherlands because it's so important to those guys from the islands to have that recognition. And we were talking about that with Seth Visser, who is the media relations professional for this Netherlands squad. And he said, you know, it's really important for those guys. They're not from the Netherlands. I mean, Didi is. He was born there. But for the guys who are from Curacao and Aruba and St. Martin, that's where they're from. They're not from mainland Europe. And they all comprise the kingdom. But that overarching umbrella recognition, that unifies this group in a very meaningful way. One, two on the ground right side. Takes a big hop. It'll get a run in as Gregorius has his second RBI of the day. The Netherlands shaves one off the deficit, five to two. If you want in this situation, you'll trade the run for the out any, any day of the week. You're struggling with your command, you know that. You're, you're just fighting to get outs. The team gave you a nice four run lead. Didi Gregorius has been swinging the bat well these last couple days. It's a big out. So two gone, and Xander Bogart's over at third for Jonathan Scope to take strike one. Scope a strikeout victim against Wong in the first inning as well. Top of the order has caused problems for Wong, but Tupac Wong did retire six straight, starting with Scope through Profar. So in this inning, he's ahead 0-2. See, he goes to that slot, and then he gets ahead of the count. Somebody struggled lately. Do. If he gets ahead of the count, you're just going to get this big frisbee slider right here. Tough to pick up from that outside. Scope ready. 0 2 pitch. Went to it again. That one's down and away. Jonathan Scope, a bit of a slow start in the tournament. He is one for eight so far. You know, I thought maybe it was overkill wearing them, but I feel good in it. Yeah. I feel good. It, was, it took a lot of creativity. We did the open live today, so we had to throw those on, run the headsets up into them. But I feel good. Kind of warm. It is a warm night here. Temperature that was around 70 degrees. And the interesting thing is when the wind dies, it is muggy feeling. But a very pleasant night for baseball. And that got scope on the left elbow. So a hit by pitch will extend the inning. Liam's really going to consider taking him out of the game right now, making a change. So that fastball spraying all over the place. There's no command to that pitch. And we will get that visit from Yue Ping Lin. And a pitching change in progress for Chinese Taipei. So Peng Huang. Avoiding the worst damage in the first, but can't make it out of the third. Reliever coming in for Chinese Taipei. We'll tell you about it when we return. The ballpark foods here in Taiwan are amazing. So diverse. Ryan and I got some bubble tea today prior to game number two. It's a fried squid. That blowtorch thing. Can we get like a lesson on how to use that later? That thing looks awesome, as we'll see Josh Palacio step into the batter's box. Josh is in the lineup with his brother Richie today. They are two of four sets of extremely styling brothers in this <laughs> World Baseball Classic. Dominic and David Fletcher on Italy. The other three sets of brothers, Jerkson, Jeremy Profar, Josh and Richie Palacios, Charlotte and Jonathan Scope, all of those guys on this Kingdom of the Netherlands roster. The 
outfits are just so good. So they're so good as Jack Palacios. You see those really steady numbers with the Columbus Clippers in the AAA International League last year. And a new arm of the game for Chinese Taipei is the right hand of the CTBC brothers, Yushuan Chen. He spent six years pitching here on the island. See, scouting report has six. Great success as a reliever. He's become a starter now. He's pitching out of the bullpen, obviously, now. But sinker, cut fastball, curve, upright his, fa up his fastball. So Yuan Wu is from Taijung. And inherits a difficult situation with runners at the corners. Jonathan Scope hit by a pitch a moment ago. First pitch down. So don't look now, it's a 5-2 game. This is the tying run at the plate and if last night is any guide, this game is very far from over. Chinese Taipei in that game took a 5-2 lead in the third. Italy rallied with four in the top of the fourth, added one in the fifth, had a 7-5 lead before Yu Cheng rescued his home squad with a two-run homer in the sixth. And a fly ball deep to right. But there for it is Subway Lee heading over. Josh Palacios gave it a good ride out to right field, but his counterpart, Lynn, hauls it in, and we are headed to the bottom of the third. Here in beautiful Taichung, Taiwan, as we continue along on night number four of the 2023 World Baseball Classic. The standings of Pool A are chaotic. A 2-0 start to this World Baseball Classic for the Netherlands. Panama is done in Pool A. They played the first four days, got a big win today. 2-0 shutout victory over Italy. Three one-win teams behind them. One of those teams right now with a 5-2 lead over the last remaining unbeaten in Pool A. Catcher, cut on Gilligan, leads things off, and takes ball one. The scenario's pretty straightforward for the Netherlands. You win tonight, and you're the top team coming out of Pool A and heading to Tokyo for the quarterfinal round. And you will take on the number two finisher from Pool B. Right now, Australia's got the inside track for that at 2-0 wins over Korea and China. But still a lot to be determined there. Japan appears on the verge of moving to another win tonight. They're up 8-2 on the Czech Republic in the fifth. They've got wins over Korea and China already. It's pretty wild to think that Netherlands have good they be in these first two games. If, they pull, if, if this stays the way it is, they're 2-1. They're level playing field. They're on the same grouping as everyone else we're watching here in this pool. And then Panama in that situation where they're just going to sit back. It's out of their control what happens from here on out, but they do still have a chance. Yeah, that is kind of the tough thing for Panama right now. You've done all you can winning today to keep some hope alive, but all you can do is sit and wait as a good at bat there by Gilligal out the catcher. And he works a leadoff walk in the third. That'll bring up Tish and Chen. And you can already see, just as a whole, these, this Dutch pitching right now is, again, just struggling with the environment. It's just so different. We pulled up some of the numbers in the in the, um, in the open right before the game, how good they've been. So it's just a different energy you have to deal with tonight. Bunt down, that hit the bat twice, I believe, and it's gonna turn into a sacrifice bunt, but immediately, Chadwick Trump is saying, no, no, no. 
Hensley Mullins out for a word with Mark Carlson, the crew chief. They're higher from the major leagues. We'll get another look at it here in a minute, but he does have a point, Tyler. You pointed out right away. We both saw the same thing. Hensley Mullins. That's a foul ball. Foul that ball. Will return. Fish and Chun to the plate. He's still in the box when it comes up and hits him again for right. a second time. So just a dead ball. Runner will return to first. You got to think if you try to be Trump on here, arguing to try and you can see the ball clearly hitting the hand after that. Didi's like, hey, help me. You can see scope in the background. Derek West came in pointing. Everybody had seen it for the Netherlands. So we'll do it again, this time on an 0-1 count. Derek West, a product of the University of Pittsburgh. That's been the difference. But again, different environments, not. Mike Bolzenbrook, the veteran, forming in the bullpen for the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Balls and two strikes. He's feeling frustrated. Another thing to look out at. Again, the pitch count, 29. Already burned through a starting pitcher. They're going to burn through this bullpen. They do have a game tomorrow. Which, if it stays like this, will count for the Netherlands. Just trying to find a rhythm. Three balls and two strikes. This thing started with the foul ball on the bunt attempt that hit the bat of Chishen Chun twice. Instead of being put out at first, he got a chance to climb back in there. Runner off, 3-2, served down the left field line. That'll touch down, it'll get all the way to the corner. No, it's knocked down out there by Jurickson Profar, and it's second and third. Man, that was extremely risky, and Profar Thankfully, from Emily Mullins' point of view, is able to knock that ball down. But if that gets past him, he's thrown on the ground, then has to scramble for it. Second and third, nobody gone on the double. You see this ball slapped into left field. You mentioned the fact that this at bat started with the foul ball. Look at Jerickson profile, just trying to throw his body in front of this play. You get a better look at it from this angle. The thing is with this too, I think with Jerks, Jerks and Profile, knowing that the wall is only a good 10 to 20 feet behind him. So it feels like he can dive, get up quick if he needs to. But man, that saves a run, throwing his body in front of that ball. That is a former top overall prospect in baseball at the shortstop position. Good point. The guy who's been diving for a lot of balls for a long, long time. That's a great, great play out there. You're right, risky. Different con conversation, that ball rattles down in that left field line. Left field, down there by the wall. D 
The other thing that's weird, you can see in this shot, there's a little triangle out there in the corner. And if that thing would have somehow deflected into that corner, look at how long you'd be able to run. The other part of this is too, see, big catch again around the bases. And for them, they could be conservative on the bases, still none out. I was going to say, Tyler, right off that, they pulled the, the uh, they got the out, and then they could brought the hitter back with the foul ball. I was going to ask, hey, listen, would you rather trade the out, the way this pitching has been going, especially Derek West, just still trying to get in the rhythm? Worked against the Netherlands. You see Hensley Mullins arguing that play. Taipei has loaded the bases in every inning so far tonight. Look at that, 1-5 ERN. That's what we were talking about in the first two games. Not the case tonight. Right now, loaded bases again here in the third inning. None out. Bernadina there to put it away. Tagging in third and scoring. Gilliglau adds to the lead in six to two. Jeff Chen took third, so runners at the corners, one gone back to the top of the order. See Anthony Mullins. When you get that bullpen, it's going to be Ryan Huntington. The lefty. So another pitching change coming for the Kingdom of the Netherlands, six to two, Chinese Taipei leading in the third. They are on their feet and loud again here in Taiwan. It's a six to two lead for Chinese Taipei with the bases loaded for the third straight inning. 
And a new arm into the game for the Netherlands, the left-hander Ryan Huntington from Aruba. Yeah, he pitches in the Dutch league. Neptunus, what a story. He's 26 years old. Played, played at the Juco in Iowa. He went from Aruba to Iowa for a couple of years. Transferred to Grambling State. Take a look at the scattering port. Best left-handed pitcher in, in the Dutch majors. Led the majors in innings and strikeouts. And here he is. Probably the most electric atmosphere he's ever experienced. He pitched at Harlem Baseball Week, which is a biennial event in the Netherlands, an invitational event for teams from around the world, and impressed Evergyon Etun, who is one of the coaches on this staff, who has been the manager at various levels in that Dutch national team program. way to this roster and here he is and inherits the bases loaded in the bottom of the third back at the top of the order and a button down a good one to first base and everybody's safe it's a 7-2 lead Dugout, they are stunned right now. Load of bases, drops a bunt down, catches everyone off guard, even Dini Gregorius, the, the longtime shortstop. Just has to hold on to that ball, really, no play anywhere. And now the first pitch in to lead in for a strike. That is just so unexpected. Yeah, it is. Excuse me, it's from the first, first third driver. Just nowhere to go. See the second baseman. Scope is playing for, try, playing for a double play, so he's pulled more towards the bag. I mean, there's so many different ways this team can beat you. I think the biggest asset that the tough thing that you're pitching against is the amount of contact you're able to make on pitches, especially outside the strike zone. Then they back you into a corner, and then they make some good contact late in the count. Like, look at that. That's well down below the strike zone. Get the bat to it. It's a changer right here, 83 miles an hour. Ryan Huntington didn't just pitch at Community College in Iowa, he also pitched at Grambling State, one of the most legendary HBCUs in the United States. And with Grambling, two seasons for the Tigers, pitched in 24 games, made 17. Starts. Didn't have a huge amount of success there, but now finds himself in the Dutch majors and having success there. Last year with the Earthrow Twins, and now with Neptunus. Two balls, two strikes, two on and one out for Lee Lin, who's already two for two in the first two innings. An RBI single in the second. here and Huntington's got his first out recorded. A strikeout for Ryan Huntington. First strikeout of the day for a Chinese Taipei hitter. You think about it though, you heard the backstory. He's 26 years old, obviously pitched in Europe, pitched some world events, but nothing like this. Comes out of that bullpen. First pitch he faces, lays a bunt down.
intelligence. Yeah, give the, the quick scouting report. Just say, hey, what'd you see? Is there any movement? What's that secondary pitch? What was the depth like? Just real quick. Exchange information. No better scouting report than seeing it 60 feet away. That is for sure. Up that top. You win MVP here, you got to dance after the game. I uh, refuse. Big slider right here from Brian Huntington getting his team back in the dugout. One, two. In the air, out in the left. Profar giving it a run. He makes the catch, and that does it here in the third. And Ryan Huntington can exhale, but two more home for Chinese Taipei in the third, and we go to the top of the fourth. It's a 7 2 lead for the home team. Back at Taichung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium in Taiwan, a 7-2 lead for Chinese Taipei over the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Tyler Mon, Ryan Roland Smith. Angleton Simmons will lead things off here in the top of the fourth inning for the visiting Kingdom of the Netherlands. Good start for the Dutch national team in this one, a run in the top of the first, but Chinese Taipei responded. Five in the bottom of the second. Four on the Grand Slam by Yu Chang. It will lead off the bottom of the fourth. Ryan, we said as we went to break, Ryan Huntington really looked like the first pitcher over the last two nights who was kind of able to tune out this crowd. He looked really comfortable yeah. and did not look supremely rattled like we've seen a lot from Italy and tonight from the Netherlands. Yeah, he's just able to execute pitches. It's amazing. I mean, we've seen this pitching staff from the Netherlands, the first two nights, get to two strikes and then put guys away, have that good execution. But that's the one thing that's been lacking, especially last night too, this Italian team. There is Ryan Huntington. But just that situation, you get to two strikes and then staying on top of that pitch, as opposed to seeing the cement mixer slider hanging out in the middle of the plate, and getting hit into the outfield. We saw that from Stephen Woods Jr. Last night, come yeah. in and just settle everything down, keep his team in it. Yeah, I shouldn't say that Huntington was the first, because Stephen Woods Jr. was terrific last night. <laughs> Speaking of terrific, how about that pitch from Shea Wan Wu, out number one. Yeah, operate his fastball. This one, just a backup slider, but took enough MPH off that thing to get the swing and miss. Right next door to us upstairs, those are the Elta announcers, the local announcers. <laughs> 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 who go right to the celebration. On the left of your screen is Phil Wu. On the right, Jing Yi Cheng, who is a former CPBL first baseman. <laughs> they have been so great to us <laughs> the last couple of days. Brought over some snacks as a grounder out to a short and snared out there. Two gone. Junior Chung making an easy play to retire Richie Palacios. The salute. Amazing. Amazing. And they both went straight to it as well. Zero hesitation. Right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> 
two outs, bases empty. Jayvon Wu, the first pitch in past the bat of Chapman Trump. I'll tell you what, the amount of times the, Nether the amount of time the Netherlands have been on their feet during some of these times when they've been on defense, man, already quickly. Two outs are gonna have to get back out there, deal with this noise. And two strikes now. No breathing room. Who trying to polish off a one, two, three top of the fourth? His pitch. Tapper, tough play, left side. Strong throw, got him. Inning over. Three up, three down, and the hero is coming to the plate to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Seven to two. Chinese Taipei with the lead. Nearing the end of the fourth night of WBC Pool A play here in Taichung, Taiwan, and we have seen absolutely nothing decided as of yet. The Netherlands, with a win tonight, would clinch the top seed from this group and head to Tokyo next week for the quarterfinal round against the second place finisher from Pool B. But. Netherlands also trails this game by five right now. And if Chinese Taipei wins, every single team in this pool is still alive to potentially be the top team coming out of it. And the leadoff man here in the bottom of the fourth is the hero so far, and he continues to be so as he lines one out to left, and it drops in for a base hit. The salutes just keep on coming. This time a single. Most RBI in a single game. There is Yi Chang, he's got four so far. Young Chi Chen had five in a game in 2006. Look at the guy right behind him on the list. Kung Kwan Gilligalau at the three run homer last night and steps into the on deck circle as Nan Ting Wu. Had a really big first game for this team. You gotta think too, if you're Hensley Mullins coming into this game, you go 2 0, you're watching every other team kind of beat, beat each other up, take care of business tonight, you're good to go, you can set up your pitching, you can start strategizing what you're doing for the next round. Here you are down 7 2. Rounder to first, Gregorius, the former shortstop, is able to get the out of the lead runner. A new Tang's hit a moment ago. Jerks and Profar out there in left field. Not a real big fan of the lights. He lost that drive up there. That's not the first time he's gestured up there as well tonight. We talked about, yeah, you can see, I mean, he's done this early in the game as well. That's something you're gonna deal with. I mean, obviously, Jerks and Profar's played in all kinds of ballparks and different atmospheres and played in the playoffs. This year with the San Diego Padres, there's a lot of moving pieces behind in that backdrop, especially coming out of the seats. Last night, we saw David Fletcher, Italy shortstop, bobble a ball on the infield, and he took issue with the LED lights behind home plate. So an adjustment to these ballparks, and an understandable one. I mean, things are very differently structured. Here's that fair down the left field line. Gilligalau sneaks it inside the stripe and down into the corner. Dug out there by Profar. Throw to the plate. Is in time to get Yu Chang. Check that to get Wu, the runner who reached on the fielder's choice, but we will see. As they want the review, I believe, haven't asked for it as of yet, but. Oh, wow, what a job by Chadwick Trump blocking the plate. Wow. That is a tremendous job. Remember, though, you look at the feet right here, he's blocking the plate. 
you essentially have to make sure you have the ball before you can swipe in. So we'll see. Burrow takes him into the path of the base runner, Yenting Wu. That is a great job by Chadwick Trump. You can see him get his foot in front of the runner after he catches the ball. We shall see. But what about the uh, throw as we well to make that even close? Here in Zaijun Field, I think as the late great Ben Scully would say, they are watching with their hearts and not their eyes. Night. And now they're going to talk about it. This is the situation they're going to figure out just with his foot slide, his foot in front of the in front of the plate. Great Ping Lin speaking he, through an interpreter. And you can see him gesturing with his foot, saying he's got his foot in front of the plate, in front of the line. You have to, as a catcher, you have to make sure you clear the path. After you catch the ball, you can you can put your body in front of the plate. And first of all, Jerickson profile, not even set his feet, firing a strike to Xander Bogarts. And then quick work with the, hit, with the, the transfer from Xander. Perfect throw. Shortstop arms up and down that left field line on the entire left side of the field for the Netherlands. I guarantee the, the response is the throw. If the throw takes in that position, then you can get in front of the plate. Now, what are they talking about? You can see, you can see the umpires telling Hens and Mullins they are just asking about the foot. That's it. That's a huge out, Carl. I mean, I know they're still up by five, but first of all, to get the second out, out's a bit hard to come by. You can see the third place umpire not even gesturing, just letting him go. Perfect throw right here. Look at that. To Xander. And then just a quick. Look at that arm strength, by the way. Barely even moved his feet. Didn't have to generate any kind of crawl. He's here the bow guards. Little bit of strike to Chadrick Trump. Big out. And the catch and throw transfer just light oh, yeah. quick. So that's the second out of the inning. Gilligal out is at second base now. He is one of the best players on the planet for a reason. Xander Bogarts. Big out at the plate. Huntington feels upstairs. Going to go out back in there safely. Talked to Zayn Bogarts at breakfast a couple mornings ago and we were talking about this crowd. And he said he was excited to be able to play in an atmosphere like this. He said, we played a few games against some of the CPBL teams before the start of the Classic, and the crowds were good, but I've heard they're even better for this. And I said, you are not going to be disappointed. <laughs> and, but I will say, look, and this is not unique. When you go to a regular season game in the CPBL, honestly, it's just like this for the majority of the time. It really is. We're talking about a season where they play every single day. Everyone's on their feet constantly. Big crowds. Great atmosphere. Oh, good pitch. No chase there from Jason Chen. Three and one. Fastball kind of freezing on the outside corner. You see Chad Trump swoop that thing back in for a strike. This offense is relentless, just constant. Anything in the strike zone, 
any count. Just the ability to make good, hard contact all over the place. If you can't get that secondary pitch, and you've seen the problem, we saw this with Team Italy last night. You see Ryan Huntington just trying to get that slider over for a strike. If you are unable to get that secondary pitch over, they're going to hunt fastballs in the middle of the play. This time getting over that. The fastball middle away, just goes with that ball. Good hard contact. There you go. Jerkson Profar was over towards the left field line. Roger Bernardino was pretty much straightaway center. That was such a long run for both of them. Third for Chet. Look at this. He knows he's got at least two, but realizes the defense has shifted over. And he's hunting for that third base. And the reaction. Three balls and two strikes now on the former Triple Crown winner, Ho Young Wong. That's what I'm talking about, too, with that slider. Obviously, Ryan Huntington wants to try and finish him off with a fastball. But these hitters can sit on that fastball. They have enough confidence knowing that Ryan Huntington's unable to get that pitch over twice, and they can sit fastball. 3-2, and Long's out in front of it. Four strikeout number two for Ryan Huntington. But another run across for Chinese Taipei, and it's a six-run lead as we go to the fifth. It has been quite a run for this Chinese Taipei offense, which has come alive since a scoreless first four innings in this 2023 World Baseball Classic on home soil. And so much of it due to that guy, Yu Chang, who led off the fourth inning with a single. And even though he was erased on a fielder's choice ground ball by Yang Ting Wu behind him, things kind of fell into place as the inning went along. Another run added to this lead, thanks to the RBI triple by Chi Shen Chen. And as we go into the top half of the fifth, Chinese Taipei in control. Jerkson Profar on for his third leadoff at bat of the game in five innings. He led off the first with a single. He scored the first of the Kingdom of the Netherlands two runs. Grounded out to first base in the third. Now here he is in the fifth. Game here last night. I 
think I slept deeper than I have maybe ever slept in my life because the energy that this ballpark brings out of you is unbelievable. I mean, this place, you leave here and your ears are ringing and your voice is hoarse. Right. Three, two, up and away for ball four. That's a good job by Profar to stick with that plate appearance and take the walk. And here is what is at stake on night number four of the World Baseball Classic, a scenario in that top slot looking less and less likely as of right now as the chaos pool in pool A with no clear favorite as of right now. We have this scenario in play. If Chinese Taipei wins this game and those two results go down tomorrow, the way that is possible, all five teams would finish it two and two, and then all kinds of tiebreakers come into play. Will one of that strike call and didn't get it, and Mark Carlson not happy with the reaction. And tomorrow at the day game, you got Chinese Taipei up against Cuba. The other ones play Italy in the night game. Everybody in this tournament has had to turn around at one point and go from the night game to the day game. Chinese Taipei will do that in the final. Yeah, and it's been detrimental too. Sorry, Italy today come out flat after experiencing this atmosphere last night. Offense is nothing doing. You got two, two teams sitting at home right now. Panama, excuse me, three teams sitting at home. Italy, Panama, and Cuba watching on to what happens here. Here's what's ahead for us tomorrow at this ballpark. Our final day of Pool A, Chinese Taipei and Cuba. Chinese Taipei will actually be the visiting team on the line score tomorrow, although not with the crowd. And the Netherlands, Italy in the nightcap to wrap things up. Two moments there for a strike in the belt. Top two finishers off to Tokyo for the quarterfinal round. They will meet the top two finishers from Pool B. And the winners of those matchups on to Miami for the semis and the final at the home of the Marlins. Right back in the count. Talked about this last inning with Chinese Taipei getting their team right back in the dugout, right in the box, quickly shutting down this Netherlands team as those innings just dwindle away. The teams that have had to play the day game after a night game are one and two. Cuba, the only win. Italy and Panama each with losses. So Chinese Taipei draws that assignment tomorrow. The Bernardino, wow. It's an interesting point. We talked about this during the day game today, the quick turnaround. Both those teams, you mentioned Panama and Italy, had to experience this, this environment, the long game, everything else that goes with it, and they quickly turn around. It's tough, it's tough to, you know, you use it to show and go situation, you wouldn't take value practice to try and get those extra hours of sleep. You kind of off your rhythm a little bit. And the only win for the three teams that have had to turn around and play the day game, Cuba, and Cuba's night game was not against Chinese Taipei. Cuba fell in that game to Italy, the extra innings game. So certainly it was a long game, but it was not this atmosphere. Right. I think this Netherlands team is in a bit of shock right now. They would have watched the game against Chinese, again, Chinese Taipei versus Panama, thinking themselves, okay, we can handle this team. They come out 2 0. The only team that really came out 2 0. And here they are. Just goes to show how important tomorrow is going to be for them. How important every inning is you play. He's got some decisions to make for tomorrow, especially on the pitching side. They're going to face Italy. We might even see a Matt Harvey come back on short rest. Yeah, it's not over yet, it's a fifth inning. But you can see a little bit of the, 
hearing headlines with from this Netherlands team. Down eight to two. Three two picks. Bernadina is gone. That's a big guy coming back in that count. Falling behind 2-0. Woo. After a walk. And then getting that punch out up in the strike zone. So one out, and here is Xander Bogarts. Bogarts, a strikeout in the first inning. Oh, one. Now another thing to think about, Tyler, is you look at this Chinese Taipei team, in the baseball scheme of things, they're kind of like the little brother to Japan and Korea. Japan and Korea have been so dominant for years and years. They're in the same region. They play a very similar style of, of, of baseball. Obviously, baseball was brought over from Japan back in the day. So it's a chance for them, especially after last year bowing out the way they did, to get to that second round in Tokyo and stepping up against Japan and, or a potential career as well. One, one to Bogarts. Even with a six-run lead. <laughs> Got to be careful with Xander Bogarts. It's going to cause a ton of fits for a ton of pitching staffs in the National League West this year with the San Diego Padres. 2-1 to him. Three balls and a strike. Jones sitting right next to Henry Mullins. He's been here before. He's played in this ballpark for the Netherlands 2013 World Baseball Classic. There's a 3 1, and not where Wu wanted that one. And Bogart takes the walk, so two walks in the inning. Let's take a look at the standings from the First two pools to get started here in the 2023 World Baseball Classic. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Nothing is chaotic in the world right now is Pool A. Wow, look at I mean, you know, Pool B, first of all, the big upset from Australia over Korea. So Korea is all of a sudden 0-2, which is shocking. Australia at the top and Japan 2-0, 2-0. A lot more clear cut on the right of your screen. <laughs> and then here we are on the left, Pool A. I mean, this is wild. Especially if it stays away. It is right now, 8-2 to two here in the fifth. The Chinese start taking pull away with this win. Japan's got a comfortable lead over the Czech Republic, 9-2. to two. That game was in the bottom of the eighth inning at the Tokyo Dome. Czech Republic actually scored the first run in that game, but Japan has taken control. So it looks as though the host nation will move into the top spot in Pool B. First pitch from the Didi Gregorius on the ground a second. Four, six, three. Getting over. All Chinese Taipei right now going to the bottom of the fifth. Incorporated. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. New armor to the game for the Kingdom of the Netherlands is the right-hander, J.C. Subaran. Quickly ahead, 0-2. What would you like to see? Now it's about executing that secondary pitch. Man. 
now, J.C. Subron was drafted in the 30th round, had eight years in the minor leagues, never got to the big leagues. He's been pitching in the Dutch league ever since, a 2.20 ERA, 92. Is a starter over there. This is throwing the mid 90s, but now as he's hit his 30s, he's 88s, 89s. And the Mullins looking for someone to weather the storm, get their team back in the dugout, get those bats working. The guy was a ranked prospect for a while in the Cincinnati Reds organization. And 12 prospects in 2012. Part of the Futures game, 2009. They still have the Futures game? A little bit different now, right? They do they have the international right. right now, American League versus National League prospects. Right. Which, to be honest, is a format that I think lends itself to better games, and not at all because the rosters weren't evenly matched, but the refreshing of that format is kind of cool. You see guys who are going to be rivals eventually grow up as teammates for at least a day at the future. Game, but now with the constant interleague play, it's not just, well, you're an American League prospect, you'll be rivals with other American League prospects. Right. Now you'll battle everybody. But it's fun. Love that event every year. And of course, this year, you'll get a chance to see it in Seattle. Swing and a miss on two and two, and Subron looking good for a couple of batters. It's the first time this in this game, first two men have been retired from Chinese Taipei. That's how tough they have been. This is that spike curveball, 12-6. Talking about that secondary pitch. When you get to two strikes, ability to, to execute. Get out of the middle of the strike zone. Tell, but Lee Lin is a pretty popular guy around here. Swing that can't get up to the elevated 89. It's one of two. Look at that. Rivals tonight. The friends always. You hope as the bouncing ball back to the mound and will retire the side. One, two, three for the first time tonight. Goes Chinese Taipei. We're headed to the sixth in an 8 2 game. about the change of the name on the front of these jerseys from the Netherlands to the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and that is to comprise this full scope of Dutch territories, Aruba, Curacao, and Martin. 2% of the land area, but a whole lot of the baseball talent that is generated by the Kingdom of the Netherlands coming from those three islands. St. Martin in the Dutch Kingdom shares an island, as you saw there, with the French St. Martin. And there is a fantastic story on MLB.com written about the one St. Martin product on this Kingdom of the Netherlands roster, and that is the relief pitcher Franklin Van Herpen. It was written by a guy who's celebrating his birthday today, Matt Monaghan from MLB.com. Very happy birthday to our buddy Matt. We first met Matt uh, in Panama for the qualifier last year. Matt does amazing work for MLB.com, tells so many of the stories of things that you might be watching on TV and thinking, I wonder what the story is behind that. I know he talked today with Hugh Chang about the salute celebration. He's profiled the horn guy. Uh, I noticed horn guy took the day off today. Yeah. No Cuba in action today. He wasn't around for either of the games. He's a breather. And for so many of those storylines, you get such fascinating stuff on MLB.com from a person who is one of the best guys you were going to meet in baseball or anywhere else. So very happy birthday to Matt Monaghan. Another friend of ours, by the way, Michael Clare. Mike is in Tokyo. There's a swing and a miss there. And a strikeout for Taekwon Wu. He's out number one. Wu still in the still in this game for Chinese Taipei. 
Big striker. So a couple punch outs last inning. This time the changeup. Under the plate. One out. Some, some good length out of that bullpen. Three up, three down in the fourth. Faced one over the minimum in the fifth, thanks to that double play off the bat of Didi Gregorius. And that was a very curious swing by Gregorius. And a first pitch swing here from Josh Palacios. Two outs. Two walks last inning. During some pro far walks, the strikeout of Bernardina, then the Bogarts walk. And it seemed as though Wu was kind of on yeah. the ropes. And Gregorius went up first pitch hacking and grounded into that double play to end the inning. We both looked at each other like, an odd choice. Yeah, you got to go on the ropes, obviously trying to generate some kind of momentum, or at least keep your team in the dugout. Look at this. Look at this box score for the Ophers. Didi Gregorius, the one hit in the middle. Both up the top, he's here to Bogart. Has walked a couple times. 0 for 11. The bottom five spots in this lineup. We got a pinch hitter in this spot in place of Andrelton Simmons, and it is Jeremy Profar. Who is taking the bat out of the hands of the third baseman who got the nod in the seventh spot. Jeremy Profar, the younger brother of Gurickson Profar. No sky away. So Simmons is out now. It's interesting. I wonder if there's an injury taking out one of your regulars, or if it's a situation where offensively hasn't looked good. Interesting time to pull up a pitch hitter here. And especially in a six run game where one swing away from getting right back in this thing. The Netherlands in the sixth, bottom of the sixth, upcoming in a six run game. Earlier in this game, I noted there was a song playing in the background. I said we've heard it quite a bit. It's because it is the song of Team Chinese Taipei, and the group that performs that song gives a little pre game rendition today. Get the crowd fired up here at Taichung Center Continental Baseball Stadium. And as we head into the bottom of the sixth inning, it seems to have worked for this team and this crowd. And it doesn't take long to get a base runner aboard to start things in the bottom of the sixth as Tsui Lin is aboard for who else? Yu Chang coming to the plate. Yeah, we wonder what was the deal with that song, the fact they played over and over. I guess it's a theme song here in Taiwan to this, this Chinese Taipei team. Got to fire it up and get out. Eight, eight to two. Barring coming in that he's first thing in the work, making quick work of Chinese Taipei, first time. Now he's got to deal with Hugh Chang. Four for six. Hit the cool 545 for the classic. He has been a revelation over the last couple of games for his team. Last night, the Grand Slam tonight. Ball and two strikes on him. starts an around the horn double play. 
it wow. has felt impossible to retire Yu Chang as of the last couple of nights. That was a big ground ball, got the fastball in just enough. You can see Chad Boutron setting up inside. There was a pitch early in the at bat that Sobaran was able to locate. I saw him sit up in there, I was like, oh, dude, don't miss. Whatever you do, don't miss out over the plate because you're just enough, you got a big double play. So, two way land taking off the base pass after the inning opening hit by pitch. Chang gone. And with the bases cleared, here is the Ten Wu. Brian, obviously, you're not going to attempt to wrap this game up earlier or anything, but if you're Chinese Taipei and you can get this thing in the win column, how important is a little bit more rest as a fly ball out of the air to right field? And I ask you that question with two outs. <laughs> what, what was that all about? Fly out to Josh Palacios. We'll wrap things up in the sixth. Headed to the final third of this game, a six run lead for Chinese Taipei. Tape operator Jock Hinkle with uh, all the great work to put together those hype pieces. This game has been extraordinary, as has honestly pretty much every game in this pool to this point. We have been so lucky in Pool A to get the type of baseball that we have gotten over the last four days and nights as Richie Palacios will lead things off for the Kingdom of the Netherlands here in the top half of the seventh inning. As Javon Wu continues to work on the mound for Chinese Taipei. Tupang Wong got the start, pitched into the third, got the first two outs of the third. It's been Wu ever since. And Ryan, talking about pitchers unavailable, it is so important to get some of this length, save as many arms, especially because Chinese Taipei comes back for the morning game or the afternoon game tomorrow. Against Cuba. That's right. And they had a few arms, we saw a list earlier, of guys who are unavailable to pitch. It's important the way you, you put this all together. Saw that shot a moment ago of Yue Feng Lin in the first base dugout. And honestly, the first night of this World Baseball Classic with his team, we kind of looked at him as a guy who maybe had drawn an assignment that was going to prove too much. His team got cracked in game number one. And he has looked brilliant the last couple of games. Well, yeah, a big part of that too is, is because of the, you know, the bullpen decisions or the lack of it. And that cost him that first game against Panama. Not if we have 12 runs, but there's always these turning points in games. If you can keep your team close, good things happen. And you just decide to st stick with your starter in that situation too long. And it cost him. And a lot of this too, you've got to remember, it's been a while since you've been at that at this level as a national program so yeah look these guys are nervous as well they want to make the right decisions they're trying to fill out their players by this point though in pool a you kind of figure each other out and on the flip side too panama i mean they had some questionable decisions against cuba a couple days ago and then today they had umberto mejia who was available and man did he ever do a good job and keep Panama in a situation now where they could still go through. Richie Palacios looking for his first hit of the classic. Two-two pitch coming to him. Now speaking of Panama, Cuba, Italy, some of these other teams that are watching along tonight, I guarantee you, they're all asking. Players are asking coaches, they're asking their PR person, their whoever, the, the point of contact. What scenario do we need to happen for us to advance? I guarantee you the wheels are spinning, especially if Chinese Taipei come away with a win. You've been part of teams in situations like that before, in which you go into the final day, swing and a miss there. Strikeout number four. Woo. Great pitch. 
And here is how this pool looks right now. The Netherlands, the only remaining unbeaten in Pool A coming into the night tonight, but on the wrong end of this 8-2 eight and two, eight to two score. And the outcomes tomorrow that could send us into all hell breaking loose. A win for Chinese Taipei, a win for Cuba, a win for Italy, and all five teams would finish at 2-2. Two and two. Which is amazing. I mean, that's really unheard of. You can, you, and listen, we're in pool play, so usually there is a bit of a, a mixed match, right? You've right. Got, and, you know, a classic example, we talk about this pool B in balance. But, you know, pool B, you've got Czech Republic, you've got China, two teams that are going to struggle to put runs together. Oh, that's a good bounce in that infield. Weird hop there. Shot up over the shortstop challenge that when Trump is on. That is the first hit, by the way, since the first inning. It had been 22 batters since the Netherlands had gotten a hit. This do about that but just smile a lot easier to see a hop like that when you got a six run lead instead yeah. of a one run lead but that's a great point about group b you look at it and you've got two winless teams over there china's 0-3 they're already out of contention to move on you got an 0-2 team in korea as much of a stunner as that is czech republic is now one and one after losing to Japan tonight and then two two and oh teams so there's clear-cut teams at the top and the other three behind them but here they don't have that yet and that's been very fun and made for some very good baseball 1-0 strike Dirks and Profar got this game started with a single and a run scored in the first inning. He walked in the fifth. He is one for two. Up some good numbers around 400 coming into this World Baseball Classic in the Netherlands uniform. So we have their change up, change up, change up. Timmy tries to go elevate fastball right here. The three change ups and then just tries to climb the ladder. No check swing. See that Chinese type paint dugout. Listen, it is eight to two, but they know better than anyone. This Netherlands team can bust open at any time. Here's the two two. Out to right. Richmond fly out. Traveling around the World Baseball Classic. Here's what's going on elsewhere in the tournament. Japan unbeaten to get things started. Look at that run differential for Japan. The Australia squad with a surprising game in a win over Korea and then dominated China in an early termination victory. And the start to Pool C and Pool D. Colombia and Mexico, the United States will square off with Great Britain to open things in Pool C. First look at Great Britain. We had a chance to watch them in the qualifiers. It's a fun team. One of those young prospects in a team that I cover, the Seattle Mariners, Harry Ford. He was so fun to watch. First time I got a chance to see him in person. One of the Mariners' top prospects behind the dish. 
guy whose father is British, still lives in London. Coming up on 58 pitches. Chehuan Wu. And Medina. I'll hang the count of one and two. Good effort, too. A lot of pitches in this game is going to be done for the rest of this pool play. Stabilizing. This effort right now, so Chinese type headers have to burn through all the pitches. They're going to have to take on Cuba tomorrow. That's going to be a challenge. Cuba's bat's eaten up. We saw that. Juan Moncada, Luis Robert Jr., two big leaguers coming back to represent their country. It's been just a crazy couple days. All these teams, big wins, big losses, all over the place. It feels like every single game, we walk down and talk to our crew, or we'll talk to people from MLB, and we say, man, what a game that was. Oh, yeah. Look at that, two strike offer. The, the change up and then pitch it backwards, kind of freeze. Freeze with the fastball. Roger Bernardino. Two, two. To first. Chang. Going to the bottom of seven. Amazing work done on the mound by Jingwan Wu. And through six and a half, Chinese Taipei in complete control on home soil. How incredible is that call? The call from the booth next door, the local broadcast here in Taiwan. Massive thanks to Elta. To our guys on the crew, Tom Lynch, Doug Dean, Justin Daniels, and another salute from the guys next door. What a call on the Grand Slam in the second inning for Yu Chang. The Festival of Baseball is alive and well in 2023 in Taijung. That's epic. I love when we get a chance to, to hear you know, Cole, different boots, different energy. Love it. So good. The catcher, Gungwon Gilligalau, had a rough first inning behind the plate. He has really had a very good day otherwise. He's gotten settled in defensively. Walked and scored a run in the third inning. Doubled and scored a run in the fourth. Nearly drove in a run on that double as well. He snuck it inside the left field line. Yen Ting Wu was retired trying to score all the way from first on that ball. And Jurek and Profar and Xander Bogarts executed a perfect relay. And a new arm into the game is Antoine Kelly for the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Ground ball left side, out to short. Nice pickup by Bogarts on a tricky hop. One out. So Barnes is really steady out, still in the game. You can see defensive replacement. Ray Patrick. Peter, we get that pronunciation on Peter. Peter, Peter, there we go. Peter, Peter. I'll just blame the Australian accent for that one, Tom. Oh, that works. So, Rocco Bernardina out of this game after an over two knife. They hit by pitch, stolen base, a walk and a run score. Prospect. Put on that 
playing nice basketball right now. His numbers last year in the Florida Complex League, outstanding, an ERA under two and a half. And 29 strikeouts against 10 walks in 23 in the third innings. He's had small in statues, only five foot 10. He can sit 92 to 95, but he can run up to 97. Really good breaking ball, but the big factor here pitching in this environment, he is 19 years old. He's in the Florida Complex League. Pitch on these backfields. All summer long and come into this. Such a great experience. A one. Three on the ground to Xander Bogarts. And three up, three down. Goes Chinese Taipei in the seventh. The Netherlands trying to get anything going at the plate as we head to the eighth. They're back to the dish. It is an 8-2 lead for the home team Chinese Taipei over the Netherlands as we head to the top of the eighth inning in a wild pool A in the 2023 World Baseball Classic. Nothing decided yet in this group. The Netherlands entering the night as the only remaining unbeaten. Chinese Taipei back there at 1-1 one one with a win tonight. Chinese Taipei takes over as the top team in this group and sets up the possibility that pending results tomorrow, everybody in Pool A could finish at 2-2. Two two. Panama has already done that, and we got a new arm into the game for Chinese Taipei in the veteran right-hander, C.C. Lee. Now, C.C. Lee came up with the Cleveland Guardians in the major leagues. More recent, he's been here locally in the CPBL. Big bullpen arm for this Chinese Taipei team, 36 years old. Got that easy 93 94. Guy was also pitched in Nippon professional baseball in Japan. And facing a big league megastar in Xander Bogarts. No balls and two strikes. The scattering ball right here. High leverage reliever. This is a guy who was setting up for Cleveland in his time in the major leagues. 2013 and 2015. There's a slider, is a secondary pitch. Two strikes, but we see that pitch is in the Bogarts right here. Came up and hit Bogarts, hopefully off the front of the helmet. Right back up at him. Having a laugh. Hopefully that's a good sign. Oh, off the brim of that helmet. Digging back in there on 0 and 2. CC Lee, last night we were having a conversation after Chinese Taipei summit. Vision Chen, who worked at inning in. Agent of Chaos, and I said, you know, it's a great nickname. But my favorite nickname is Chinese the Taipei team. Belongs to CC Lee, and it is Instant Noodles Timer. The reason behind that being, the Bogarts can't hold up, and he's gone on strikes for round number one. The thought process is, you put your instant noodles in the microwave, by the time they're done, he's got the save. I like it. Big strike out right here. This is that slider. Xander Bogus not able to hold up. Guessing wrong on that pitch. So Bogarts all walks and strikeouts tonight. Two walks, two Ks. And here is Didi Gregorius. You know, Ryan. Coming into tonight, the Netherlands well aware that with a win, they would clinch the top spot in this pool, and it yeah. felt like they just got pulled under by this tidal wave of noise and energy and 
everything else in this ballpark. They took that lead in the top of the first, quieted the crowd a little bit, but Yu Chang's grand slam turned this game completely upside down. Yeah, it really did. Again, you're gonna be frustrated. I said this earlier, Hensley, Mule Hensley Mullins, this is a team that they can handle. Chinese Taipei, obviously going up 3-0. There is no question they're going to the second round. Now all of a sudden they're gonna face a team Italy, which is tough. We have seen them at their best. They have, they have that potent offense. They have plenty of pitching. So it's not a done deal for Netherlands who always get far in this tournament, but just have to regroup. It's amazing though. They're, the amount of times we've seen these teams where they look good, everything's clicking, and then they just get shut down the very next day. You know, something we talked about in Chinese Taipei's opener, we talked about that Czech Republic team, which got thumped on day number one in the qualifier in Regensburg, Germany, and had to play its way out of the loser's bracket. It was a different format for the qualifiers. They could not lose again. It was a double elimination format, and they won their way through to the main tournament. And we said Chinese Taipei, different format, but essentially was going to have to do the same thing. You lose your first game, there's hardly any more margin for error. Yeah, I mean, they nearly got done in five innings, down, nearly down 15. I really avoid that, but you're right. It was crazy. And we, we looked at each other and said, man, this Czech Republic team, I know we're excited to see him and hear the backstories, but they just don't have it. Wow. A couple of close pitches, a couple of sliders that were borderline. Here you go, able to draw the wall. Highlights from that 2009 upset win, the Shocker, when they knocked out the Dominican Republic. That was really the arrival on the scene in World Baseball Classic history for this Dutch national team. Eliminated in the first round in 2006, second round in 2009, and into the semis in each of the next two editions in San Francisco and Los Angeles. I remember the story in 2009, there was only one reporter from a Dutch outlet who had an open-ended ticket and was able to stick around in Miami after that team advanced out of the first round. Everybody else had booked flights thinking, wow, this team's going to get bounced. And the Netherlands has built something really special since then. Two balls and no strikes now. Jonathan Scope. Here is that 2009 World Baseball Classic team. That was the opening round in Puerto Rico. Incredible win. That man was on the team, Vladimir Valentin. They are just lifeless right now in that dugout. That pitch there for a strike. CC Lee into the count at two and one. And one now. And you think of some of those past results, the fact it's going to come down to, if it stays this way, obviously, but come down to that final day, a game they have against Italy, which is so huge. You know, team, last couple Royal Baseball Classics getting through that second round into the semis. Rivals going at it in the night game. Another close pitch on 3 2. Doesn't get the strike call. And it's back to back walks now. I gotta tell you, Tyler, he's been making, coming up with some good pitches, but getting squeezed a little bit. I see a pitching change. CC Lee, the one time big leaguer. He has struggled at times in the World Baseball Classic. Looks like we're gonna get a 
Get some change right here. There's a fastball in, running in on the hands. Oh, no. New arm will enter this game, top of the eighth inning. Chinese Taipei with an eight to two lead over the Netherlands. take over on the pitcher's mound as we move along here in the top of the eighth inning in Taichung, Taiwan. An 8-2 lead for the home squad. Rackets and Monkeys southpaw. Set to go on in relief. Possible curveball sinker. Fourth ball. Pulls in the top of delivery. Has to change speed. Doesn't have a whole lot of velos. He does struggle against Riley's bread and butter is left on left. We've already seen that in this World Baseball Classic. Riley's has been the challenge for him. I should throw that third option, that changeup. He inherits runners at first and second after the one out walks issued by CC Lee. And we've got a pinch hitter here in the person of Charlene Scope. So talked about the brothers on this Netherlands roster. And we have seen all three pairs of brothers in the game tonight. Charlene Scope takes a 90 mile per hour heater for strike one. He a steady dose of fastballs and that fourth ball at some point. Set a one, two. There it is. Not a real productive night with runners in scoring position for the Netherlands. Chinese Taipei batting 400 as a team in high leverage spots. Yeah, they've been there. The word I used before was relentless in those middle innings. There was just no give in. You had to command three pitches in that bat. Otherwise, I'll just make a good contact. Hard contact as well. We talked about the fact they only had five home runs. In, that's from 2006, 2009, 2013, 17 four World Baseball Classics. They eclipsed that mark already here in 2 That fourth ball, and then just blew him away with a fastball. So it brings up Jeremy Profar, who entered this game as a pinch hitter in the place of Andrelton Simmons last inning. Andrelton Simmons finishing his night 0 for 2. That was actually two innings ago that Profar took the pinch hit at bat. 1 0. Even 
one ball and one strike. Jeremy Profar most recently playing in the Mexican League with the Bravos de Leon. Chan, he's pitched at the World Baseball Classic 2017. Take a look at the numbers right here. A whole lot of success. I guess Israel two and two thirds with two runs. Korea struggled three runs. Can get through the second inning as a starting pitcher, especially. It's a bit of a mixed bag. It's a big moment for him. It's, it's always fascinating when you see these Chinese Taipei pitchers go play in Japan. It's a big league for them. Obviously, they have the local league, the CPPL here, but they get a chance to play, you know, essentially a better league, one of the best leagues in the world. Put up some really good numbers, 136 innings. That's a good, excuse me, 136 games. That's a good chunk of experience in the MPB and a three and a half ERA. Big bat waiting in the on-deck circle if it gets to him. One foul away. Vladimir Valentin has come out from the third base dugout. Not in the lineup to start this game today. And the Nippon Professional Baseball single season home run king. Hoping that he will get a crack at the plate with the bases loaded. And a guy who would have faced Kwon Yu Chen, that was cross pass in Japan. Guy he knows really well. Another big pitch coming, 3 2. Left side and through for a base hit. Jeremy Profar comes through. Around third base, Gregorius scores. And Valentin will bat here in the top of the eighth as the Netherlands gets it back down to five. Again, still a big deficit, but Carl, one thing, we've talked about this a lot. If you're going to lose, you still want to leave with some kind of momentum, some kind of heartbeat, especially offensively. You don't want to be in a situation where you get shut down for pretty much the entire game, except for the third inning, and then walk in to play Team Italy tomorrow. You want to leave on some sort of good note. So if you can put some runs up, you know what? If you don't win, you don't win. But hey, look, you would say to each other, we're good offensively. Conversation at the mound. I'll tell you what, too. One, one thing, Tyler. These bullpen arms, the Chinese Taipei, they go on their pace. You now, sometimes we talk about obviously you want to have good tempo, etc. But what they do is slow that rhythm down when they're facing these hitters. They want to be on their time. The pace starts to slow down. It's just a different tempo. But they are still in this game the uh, kingdom of the Netherlands now eight to three as soon as that ball got through the infield pro far hustling up the first baseline turn and pointed to his dugout of Valentin may do the same thing an RBI single for him back up the middle and the Netherlands chipping away now here in the eighth the tying run will be in the on deck circle it's an eight four game Again, a little bit of a heartbeat. Like I said, they're chipping away. They are still in this game. I know there's two out in the eighth inning, but they have the bats to do it. Not to mention, in the ninth inning, you're gonna get a chance, the top of the lineup is gonna get one more chance to hit. That's huge. Another pitching change coming here for Chinese Taipei as Wei Bing Lin will go out to make the move. 
The Netherlands had one hit from the second through the sixth. Two already in this inning and two runs home. Pitching change underway. Wild Pool A continues tonight here in Taijung, Taiwan. The top two teams are headed on to the quarterfinal round in, Co in Tokyo next week. The Netherlands heading into the day today with the inside track, but trailing this one eight to four in the eighth. All kinds of wildness ensues tomorrow if Chinese Taipei hangs on to this win tonight with a Cuba win over Chinese Taipei in the afternoon and Italy over the Netherlands in the night game. We would have five two and two teams. And a new arm into the game. Cha Hao Sung taking over in the eighth. Cha Hao Sung pitched yesterday. That means he's going to be unavailable for that final game tomorrow. Now have to take a good look and see what the availability is for China for uh, Chinese Taipei and the Netherlands. Again, we talk about that, that bullpen management is so crucial. He got the save last night in that 11-7 win over Italy. Pitched an inning and a third. That's why Chen getting that final out, unable to do it against Ballantine, hitting that ball up the middle, knocking him out of the game. It matters. Crazy as that sounds, it makes such a, an impact. That's why it's so important the way you manage that bullpen. If you're a first time manager doing this for the first time and dealing with some of those restrictions, you put yourself on the ropes, especially when the games count on that last day. We saw two pitchers through the first seven innings in this game for Chinese Taipei. Three now here in the eighth. Oh, one. One on one. So Chao Sung last night finished the game off. Expanded strike zone. He's got that upper A's fastball, that high spin rate. That ball can get on you. 88 to 90 miles per hour. Not going to blow you away with velocity. He kind of throws that invisible middle of the plate. Chadwick Trump awaiting a 1-2. And lifts it out to left. That'll do it in the eighth. The Netherlands mounts its first charge since the third. They get only one. Johnny Taipei, back to the bat rack. Bottom of the eighth upcoming. Strike three. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Misses outside, and now they will score the game winning run on a walk. High and deep and gone. And it gives Korea a three run lead here in the 10th. First pitch swinging fly ball down the right field line. That will drop for extra bases. It's a leadoff extra base knock for Kun Yu Jong in the bottom of the eighth. This Chinese Taipei team has dealt with so much disappointment in the World Baseball Classic. Those highlights you saw, one of those wins was against the Netherlands. One of those losses for Chinese Taipei. A big win for the Netherlands. 
via the early termination rule six years ago cpbl teams not on the same page with the federation the chinese taipei baseball association the limigo monkeys did not send their top players which were some of the best players on this island at that time and in 2023 this is the most talented roster that chinese taipei has probably ever put together and it is showing tonight they're trying to get that run back to the top of the eighth new arm into the game for the netherlands is the right-hander ari franzen and he's 21 years old six foot three in the cincinnati red system We've got 15 players in their organization playing in the World Baseball Classic. Wow. They just struggle a little bit. Seventh inning. Thank you, Steve. Back in that dugout. Still trying to make up for that run, like you said, Tyler. That's how much that man right there, Lynn, the manager for the Chinese side, Pedro, respects the offense, especially when you got the top of the order due up here in the ninth inning for, for uh, the Netherlands. away from a second straight win. 9-4, our score through eight.
Another amazing night of baseball here inside Jung. Yu Chang, second inning grand slam, turning the tide for his team. And this is where things stand in Pool A. The Netherlands 2-0 coming into the night tonight. Likely headed for 2-1 as it looks at the moment, which means you can put a little check mark next to the first thing on that with these outcomes list. And the Pool of Chaos will hit its final day tomorrow. And with the other two outcomes on that list, we would have five teams at two and two. And then a slew of tiebreakers coming to play as the first pitch is there. To the leadoff man in the lineup and in this inning, Jerks and Profar. This, I mean, what a performance and what a win this would be for Chinese Taipei tonight. They had that extremely disappointing loss. Yeah in their first game to Panama. They bounce back with a win over Italy, but you do kind of feel like as you take a look at tomorrow's schedule, Chinese Taipei probably had some semblance of, maybe not doubt, but wondering, okay, which one of these games is going to propel us? As a rounder is out to short. Well, two of hop out there for Penny John, one out. But to do this against the favorite in the pool, extremely impressive. It really is. To his left. That ball gets to the middle. You'd be right. You go back to that first night against Panama, and they just had nothing going. Panama, 12 runs put up against them. And then last night, just a completely different look. Roger Bernardino, remember, lifted from this game, so Ray Patrick Dinner takes ball one. Chao Sung. Got the save with an inning and a third last night. He's trying to do the same here tonight. Hitter in the Marlins organization. Chang carrying his team. We talked about the difference from the first night against Panama to last night Friday and Saturday tonight. Yu Chang has really been a huge part of that. Pining that last night, going to get to 7 7. And then the grand slam tonight. Like we said, there are not many people on the planet who have had a better last 25, 27 hours or so than Yu Chang. So a big weekend. 2 2. Taipei's offense has come alive to say the least here on home soil. First 13 games in World Baseball Classic history. Those numbers compared to the last three. And the thing that stands out is the home runs. Five. Last 13 games, five home runs. They've matched that already in three games. 3 2. Ditter gets into one deep to left field. Going back on it, Po Young Wong on the warning track. That ball's gone. Ray Patrick Ditter with a one out homer in the ninth. And the Netherlands not going to go quietly. Ray Patrick Ditter obviously not one of the stars here for the Netherlands. Get the chance to come in and pinch hit. We'll make some big decisions for him. Here's the goal tomorrow. That game against him. It's just a fastball middle. Go to Oliver. That ball was crushed. 
Another factor is as well here with Sung. Obviously, he's going to be down tomorrow, but do you have to go to the well again with the pitching, with the bullpen? You've got Xander Bogarts up. Media this order coming up is right behind him. San Diego Padres shortstop Xander Bogarts. To say. Shortstop, third base, second base, you can put him anywhere. 11 years, $280 million. The guy embarking on the next stage of his baseball career after representing his country here in the Classic. The 0 1 pitch on the way to him. Look at this, right Patrick here, fastball, middle, didn't miss it. Big moment for him. Now Xander Bogarts trying to keep this going. Two strikes. So good at hitting, slapping that ball the other way. Makes better contact. Not giving up in that dugout. Nathan Estadisa, the Phillies prospect. Here comes the slider. He's going to have to bury it. Some of the big league talent that's in this pool. Vinny Pascantino with Italy. Xander Bogarts with Netherlands. Vinny Pascantino is next to impossible to strike out consistently. We've seen some really good pitching from Chinese Taipei last night against Vinny Pascantino. And then tonight against Xander Bogarts. Some of the best hitters in the game on the planet. It's a good slider. It's getting swinging this. And to keep it alive, the task falls to Didi Gregorius. And a first pitch bouncer out to short. Chinese Taipei, two and one. extremely impressive night for Chinese Taipei and for these fans here in Taiwan it is celebration time again hey, look at the Netherlands have a big opportunity to wrap this pool up and take care of business in front of this crowd quiet this crowd down they just simply couldn't do it Chinese Taipei have got some serious momentum they've got the day game tomorrow so that quick turnaround for them in front of this home crowd. Carried by that man right there, Hugh Chang. Just another unbelievable night of baseball here at Taichung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium as this Chinese Taipei roster salutes the fans here in Taiwan. And it won't be long before they all see each other again because Chinese Taipei is right back at it. Coming up tomorrow, and as we take a look at the updated pool of chaos here in Zhejiang. One of those things we had listed on this graphic, done. Tomorrow, the early game, Cuba and Chinese Taipei, and Italy and the Netherlands at seven o'clock. the final day with so many unknowns is this what you're predicting no when you was a balanced pool but not this crazy not this chaotic and what a far cry this is right now from where we were wednesday night when chinese taipei got thumped by panama in a 12 to 5 loss this team is resurrected the last two games yeah. and due in large part to that guy, Yu Chang. And no one in this building wants to leave. No one's heading for the gates to the parking lot. Everyone is sticking around. Incredible. 
So one more day of Pool A remains. Tomorrow, here in Taichung. Noon local time, later tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern time, back in the United States. Don't miss our continuing coverage from here in Taiwan from the Intercontinental Baseball Stadium. Yu Chang and the host team will wrap up pool play against Luis Robert and Cuba. For Ryan Roland Smith and our entire crew here in Taiwan, this is Tyler Vaughn saying goodbye for now. And thanks for watching our presentation of the 2023 World Baseball Classic. We'll talk to you tomorrow.